Hello and welcome. In the previous video, I created this beginning of a solar system. And in this video, I'm going to continue building it by working on my JIT anim nodes, using less patch cores and more attributes to organize my hierarchies more efficiently, and also get into textures, I'm going to apply textures on top of these objects. So they look less like these polygonal things, and more like planets and moons and the nice sun, I think that's way more interplanetary. So let us begin with looking at these JIT anim nodes. So I am going to add, let's say one more planet and two more moons on that set planet. And I don't want to worry about connecting all these JIT anim nodes, even though it visualizes these ideas well. And instead, I want to look at named contexts in JIT anim nodes. So in my first JIT anim node object, the one I used for the sun, I'm going to give it an attribute, I'm going to give it the name attribute, which is going to give this instance of JIT anim node a name, and I'm going to name this sun. Right, and uh, the second one, I can name it uh, planets, whoops, name planet one, because there are going to be more planets, and then I'm going to take my moon, take its JIT anim node, and I'm going to name it uh, moon one. And of course, this did break this rotation, this orbital movement we had around the central sun object, because these JIT anim nodes are not connected to each other anymore, there is no more hierarchy. And as I've said, instead of using these patch cores, what I want to do is to explore the anim attributes, the anim attribute will assign a parent anim node and named instance of an anim node that is going to take as a parent. So pretty much the same thing that we do by using these patch cords. So if I go to my planet one jit anim node, and I give it the attribute anim sun, it is going to have the same result It's going to rotate around our sun object, right? And I can do the same thing with my moon, I can give it the name, I mean, the anim attribute, and then say, planet one, and it's going to rotate just like as it was before around my principal planet. Now, this is useful if you're going to have a bunch of JIT anim nodes, and they're, they're all going to be connected to each other in complicated ways. So you don't want this tangled spaghetti mess on your patch. Right. And, uh, you know, to show this, why don't I make some more planets, let's make a planet too. So I'm just going to copy all of this, which is going to throw some errors in the uh, in the console since I am attempting to give the same name to multiple instances of JIT anim nodes. But uh, let's change that, shall we? So it's going to be the same object, but I'm going to make it a bit larger scale of 0 0.5. I'm going to give it the position minus three. So it's going to be mirrored on the x axis. And I'm going to give it the name planet two. And as you can see, it immediately adds this other guy here, let's give it a different color as well, let's make it purple. All right, uh, so this can be your second planet. And then I can create two more moons by just copying my combination of uh, JIT anim objects and JIT gel grid shape, which is again going to give this error in the max console, but we can just dismiss that and uh, go to JIT anim nodes, give it a different name. Let's say moon two. And uh, let's make its parents not planet one, but planet two. And once again, it has immediately connected to our second planet, we can do the same thing with our second moon we Can tie it to planet two, we can give it the name moon three, and we can make its position the opposite of the previous guy. So it has these two, uh, two moons, opposite of each other rotating around. Pretty cool visual, I gotta say. Right. And uh, if I want to make it even more clear, and it's always, always, always very good to organize your patch as well, I can uh, make these guys a bit, uh, a bit shorter, a bit horizontally better looking, and I can organize it. So to the left, we have our sun and in the middle, we have our planets and to the right, we have our moons. Okay, great. Uh, so these all look well, but they still don't really look like planets. So now I'm going to use textures, I'm going to give these objects textures of planets and moons and the sun. And for this, I'm going to use the website uh, solarsystemscope.com. I'm going to put this link in the description of this video down below. Uh, but this is a nice website, it has a bunch of high resolution textures for free of a lot of planets in our solar system of the Earth of uh, the sun 
stars, moon, whatever you want. So for my purposes, I'm going to take this texture of a sun that I can just uh, go to this website, find this moon, download the high resolution or the ultra resolution, doesn't matter, which is going to load this texture and also the sun and also the Jupiter and uh, let's see, and also Venus. Venus is a fun planet. So I can right click, I can save images and I have already saved these uh, images in my folder, in my uh, folder where I have my max patch that has the solar system. Now it's important that you save these images in the same folder as your max patch so that it is added to the uh, to the file system of Max so that it can look and find and locate these items, these images very easily. If it's, it's, if it's at another location, if it's at your downloads or if it's on your desktop, there's a chance that Max is not going to be able to find these images and it's going to throw a bunch of errors. So it's always the best to put these images on the same folder as your patch. And also for convenience, I named them solar system underscore moon, and they are automatically saved as JPEG files. So going back to our patch, uh, now since I want to apply some textures, I'm going to create the texture object in Max, which is JIT GL texture. And since I know I'm going to load some files, I can immediately give it the file attribute, which is, you know, it selects an image or file to load, and I can type in solar system uh, underscore sun and then also very essential is the file type jpeg and if there are no errors on the max console this means that it has worked everything is good right and while i'm at it i can uh, also give this texture a name that so that i can refer to it in other contexts so i can name it text sun you can name it whatever you want all right, and to apply this texture, we have to tell this JIT GL grid shape to refer to this texture, refer to text sun as its own texture instead of just having no texture and using this color that I have given it. All right, so I can add this attribute, add the attribute of texture and then name in the texture name I have given my JIT GL texture. So I type in add texture and then text sun. If I press enter, okay, okay, so this is kind of a sun, it's a weird green sun, uh, it's also still very polygonal, and it also has shadows in it, which I'm pretty sure suns or stars don't have shadows, but don't don't quote me on that. So it is doing this because, I mean, first of all, it is green because it still has this color attribute of a green color. And this is how textures work in Max. This is how textures work in the 3D world of Jitter. It first applies the texture and then puts the color on top of that texture. So if I remove the color attributes, it is going to look a bit better. It is going to look a bit gray because by default, all objects are a bit gray. They have the color value of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So I can also give it the color attribute of 1, 1, 1, a white color, which is going to make it look much brighter. And while we are at it, we can also turn on smooth shading, the feature we turned off in the last video, but now it will make it look much better, much more like a sphere. And then I can also turn off the lighting so that there is no shadow on the image. And there you go, it looks much more like the sun, much more like the sun we like to see. And I can apply this same logic to my, uh, to my other planets and my moon, right? So I can create another JGL texture. I can refer to the file solar system underscore moon dot JPEG. And I can give it the name text moon. And then I'm just going to copy this, which is once again going to give an error in the max console because I you know, have created two JGL textures with the name text moon, but we can change this. This can be your text uh, planets one. And this can be Venus underscore Venus. And then we can go once more, text planet two. And what was her? Was it? It was Jupiter, right? Text a solar system underscore Jupiter. Yep, that seems right. Okay, now I just have to add these objects to my grid shapes, right? So I have my moons here. They are all going to have the same extra attribute, right? So what I want to do is for all of them, I want to enable smooth shading. I'm going to keep the lighting because these objects are supposed to have shadows. 
Uh, they're planets and moons, they're not suns. Uh, so the color is 111 and texture is Tex Moon. And it is a bit tiny, but let's see. So this should be the moon of the red planet. And there it is, that looks like a tiny moon. Fantastic. And since all the positions and scales are determined by JitAnim node, I can just copy the description of this object and just paste it here. It's very lazy, very effective, very fun to do things like this. And now our other two moons are also more moon-like. And lastly, uh, let's work on our planets. So I can go to JIT, JL Grid Shape. Uh, this is the first planet. Once again, this kind of color attribute, smooth shading is enabled and texture is text planets with capital P, planet one. Yep, there it is. And last but not least is our second planet. I can once again enable smooth shading and then I can say texture, text, planet 2. Aha, looks really nice, but there's a tiny problem that this guy is sideways, right? Uh, I don't think this planet Jupiter looks like that, at least from our point of view. We always imagine it having rotated 90 degrees. So to fix this quickly, I can just uh, disconnect this JIT anim drive so it's not rotating on its own anymore, and I can give this JIT anim node that is connected to the second planet the attribute, let's make it a bit more visible while we are at it. I can give it the attribute rotate x, y, z, and I can rotate it 90 degrees on the x axis. And there we go, that's much more Jupiter like. And all I have to do is connect it back to my JitAnim drive, and perfect. All right, and uh, we can also flatten these guys a bit while we are at it. Uh, once again, a nice looking patch is always very good to work with, especially if some time has passed and you go back to these patches and you know what everything does immediately. Okay, great. Okay, so we have applied textures. They're looking good. There is just one tiny problem, which is the lighting. I mean, right now there is lighting in the scene. There is obviously some kind of shadows appearing on these planets and these moons, but they're not really reacting to the sun, in fact, right now this Jupiter has shadows exactly where it's supposed to have light and it has the light where it's supposed to have shadows. So uh, we need to deal with the Jet GL light object, which is going to place a light source in a 3D scene. I can give it the arguments of my rendering context of space, which is not going to change anything because it is the def default light that is already on, right? So I need to play with the type attributes. And there are different kinds of uh, type, there are different types of lights uh, in Jitter, there are different types of light available to JIT GL light. We are going to get into that in another video. But you just need to know that by default, I believe it's directional, if I'm right, yes. Uh, which is some kind of uh, ambient light that you know all objects are uh, kind of lit up uh, from the light source. But I instead of that, I want to do the point type. As you can see, the light uh, and the shadows look like they're reacting to a light source. And to make it look really good, I can also change the position of this object. I can pos make its position really at the center. I believe by default the position is 1, 1, 1. But if I make it 0, 0, 0, then the light source is really placed inside the sun. Right, so we really have a simulation where the sun is sending out the light waves and you know the shadows and the lights and the surface of the planets and the moons are much better looking. Okay, I would say this is already much, much, much better than what we ended up with in the last video. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is to fix these uh, polygonal look that the spheres still has. Uh, with the sun, I don't know if you see it, it is a sphere, but it is actually a bunch of polygons, so you can see these jagged edges. And to deal with this, I can first of all turn on FSAA at the FSAA1 attribute JIT world, which is going to enable full scene anti-aliasing, which is going to iron out those extra jaggy pixels in my render context. And then I have to retoggle JIT world. Yeah, it does look better. I don't know if you see those. Uh, extra pixels that are being removed right now, but it's nice. And then to give this sphere a much better look, I can give it the attribute dim, which is a dimension of my uh, dimensions of my object. And by default, this is 20 to 20. 
But if I increase this, then the 3D object is going to have a higher resolution, right? If I make it 50-50, you'll see that it's uh, much more sphere-like because there are much, many more polygons at play. And if I want, I can even make it 100 to 100. And the higher the dimension is, the higher, the more it's going to use the CPU. So it's always good to watch out for that, especially if you're using a bunch of objects. So I'm going to keep it at 50-50 for now. And if you want, you can also do this at the dim attribute to the other planets and moons as well. Okay, we are going to leave it here for today. And in the next video, I'm going to add, well, I'm going to add a cube map. I'm going to add a nice starry background in the, uh, well, in the background of this rendering context. And I'm also going to play with the camera so that we can change cameras and focus on the point of views of different planets and moons and the sun uh, by clicking different buttons. Until then, thank you for watching.